This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. This is the show where we help people build wealth, do work that they really love, and create amazing actual relationships. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Joining me today, my co-host Ken Coleman of The Ken Coleman Show, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, talks to folks about their careers and their jobs every day. We'll be answering your questions, as I said, about your job, doing work you love, about building wealth, and anything else. Jump in and we'll talk. So, Ken... Um, A lot of stuff moving around in the economy. Mm, Yes. A lot of inflation and recession worries. Gas prices are enough to give you a freaking heart attack. (laughs) God, I filled up my Raptor, and I just about just laid down in the middle of the gas station parking (laughs) lot and held my heart for a minute. Oh, man. I mean, because you fill up a a Prius, it's one thing. But when you fill up a Raptor, it's another, man. I'm just saying. I can only imagine. Wow. I bought houses cheaper than that back in the day. But, oh, my gosh. It's a, it's a thing, and it you go is. to the grocery store, and you you know you put your buggy's half full mm-hmm. of what it was, and it's just as much money. It's almost like shopping at Whole Foods every day. That's what you know. <laughs> I mean, it's like really, it's crazy. It and I true. used to call it whole paycheck, right? But yeah. the uh, uh, you know it's it's wild out there. The interest rates have gone way up on housing. Um, house prices, of course, have gone way up in twenty and in twenty one. They're up a little this year. Um, it, and everybody's, you know, worrying about a real estate crash now, and 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 labor cost mm-hmm. to hire someone to get a job. You know, I'm seeing a lot of comments and and stuff flowing through in our place right now. It's like, how do I, how do I, I can't even make it. I mean, I can't. Inflation has just destroyed what was left of my little budget. Um, but in my mind, when I hear that, there's always two sides to e- each uh, budgeting equation: the in goes income side and the outgo side. I also know that they're no longer paying people $10 an hour to put the bread on the shelves. They're now paying them 20 to $30 an hour mm-hmm. to put the bread on, which is why the cost of bread went up, by the way. It wasn't wheat, yeah. and it wasn't a shortage. It's the cost of labor. Oh, and the diesel fuel in the truck to deliver the bread. Oh, yeah, that's built into that. So that's why your loaf of bread went up. That's why Sharon bought some bologna the other day, and, man, that was a lot of money. What? That's a just it's it's real food, but Sharon it was Sharon bought bologna. Oh, for me, yes, a, a homegrown tomato, this is big very red onion, news. big old piece of white bread, and really? a t- that's better than filet mignon, man. Don't you know anything? I I just I know you have a you very fried a little bit. It's a redneck. It's a redneck delicacy, oh, man. I mean, frying come on. the bologna. Okay. You fry it a little bit. You put it on there. Oh man, it's about you as could good take as, the boy out we're of any sidetracked here. But anyway, <laughs> the point being that if your budget is stressed, Ken. Mm-hmm. And your salary is fixed, it might be time to look. That's correct. Because you might be able to make a whole lot more money somewhere else. But be careful because you could jump over into one of these yes. companies that have lost their minds and are doing all kinds of crazy butt stuff, and then you get stuck in the middle of the crazy butt stuff. Oh, yeah. We're seeing a lot of that. Now, the facts are, just give you two different stories. When you change jobs, we've seen over the last year and a half, you're looking at about a 14% on average pay bump. Well, that would cover your inflation. That's pretty nice, especially if you adjust your budget. You know, I also saw a story recently on the news about this couple that's uh, they're extreme frugal savers and budgeters, probably our kind of people, and they're like, we're not even feeling the inflation. I know that when we do these debt-free screams over the last six months, inflation doesn't come up at all. So there is a way to do it the way that we teach it works. But uh, let's give you some good news about the economy. Just reported on my show today that uh, Olive Garden, they beat their projections. Uh, and what have they done? They've kept their prices low. And turns out families like a lot of free breadsticks and, um, you know, bottomless salad. Mm-hmm. But That's, the uh, point is... my weight in both of those <clears throat> right. things. Right. Eh? But here's a story that you're not hearing in the media. When a restaurant like that decides, you know what, we're going to keep our costs where they are. It's costing us a little bit more. But they got more people coming in because they're offering things. So you hear all this bad news about inflation and the economy. We also saw today, reported today, that uh, for the first time in seven months, home sales spiked in may so this doomsday stuff we need to get over it well it it's 
Those the, are good the, indicators. The anxiety and the fear around filling up your car and almost passing out is real. Absolutely right. The anxiety and the fear over, you know, half the stuff in the grocery basket and it's just as expensive is real. However, what's just as real is there's almost an across the board increase in wages. That's and if you haven't received that, then uh, you should talk to your employer because he's right. getting ready to have to replace you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And there's opportunity like we've never seen before. We still see 11 What we are jobs. paying for a position at Ramsey has changed dramatically oh, in 12 yeah. months based on the marketplace. That's correct. In order to get someone to do X or Y or Z, it is different than it was 12 months ago. And that difference is at least 14 percent that's correct that's the average yeah Yeah. so folks that's the average of people that change jobs so we'll take those calls today because dave's right we don't want to chase just a paycheck because that'll wear off if you're in a crappy culture with gossipy people you leave a good company and you go into a bunch of crap and they're doing the 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 woke agenda and then and you hate that stuff and you all of a sudden you're going to be spending all your money on and your time on that instead of actually helping people and doing work that's correct so um we're quite the opposite around here at Ramsey. We're kind of boring old dinosaurs <laughs> and, um, and kind of proud of that, by the way. But the uh, – um, anyway, the, the – uh, yeah, so, I mean, you, you, know, you make sure you're going to a company that aligns with your values. Maybe you want to do all the woke stuff. Then yep. go, you need to make sure they're doing all that stuff. Um, but a lot of them are doing – you know, they're going overboard with it because they're just virtue signaling. That's correct. And so if you leave a good company – like, I mean, I have, we had a young man that left here a while back, and he texted this weekend, and he's like, oh, God, this place is a disaster that I went to. Mm. And he got he got more money than we were paying him. So he got a raise, sure. but he went into a mess, you know. And so be careful that you're not doing that, or be careful you're not taking a job that you hate, or be careful that you're not thinking something's – you know, what it was. I had a – Another guy, a friend of mine, left his position because he was going to work 20 hours a week from home for more money. Yeah. Now he's working 80 hours a week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From home. Well, there's a lot for of more people. money. Yeah. It's a mirage. A lot of yeah. people lying. <laughs> well, here's here's what's unique about Ramsey Solutions, and we're always hiring. So, you know, you need to be checking out RamseySolutions.com. But we know from research, I spoke about this at our Entree Leadership Summit, here are three human needs that we all want fulfilled at work. Number one, we want to see meaning and purpose in our work. We have a crusade mentality because we're giving people hope and real practical steps for life transformation at this company. Number two, we want to be recognized for our unique contribution. I can't tell you the stories of people that are executives here in this company who started out as administrative assistants, and because we recognize people's hard work, we recognize their talent, we give them an opportunity to get promoted, they do here. Two of them them sitting on my operating board. Two of them. And then the third thing that we need is is we want a relationship with our leader. I cannot tell you how much this company cares for its people. It's a real relationship with the people that you report to. If you don't have that, find it somewhere. Yeah, find it somewhere, and make sure if you're going for more money, that you get that too or else the money will be you'll be hating your life all for a few bucks that's right but you can help with inflation by either an upward uh, a raise at your current place or a uh, a move to somewhere else well i work for the state well maybe it's time to move somewhere else they're probably not going to give you a 12 percent inflationary raise this year and you probably can get it somewhere else this is the ramsey show Chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jackson, Kansas City. Hey, Jack, how are you? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, I had a question about uh, purchasing a vehicle in today's climate Mm -hmm. for my wife. Mm -hmm. Uh, The... It would amount to purchasing two vehicles at the same time, basically. Okay. And so I, riddle I've me this. What are you really talking had... about? Well, I've been I've been driving a vehicle for about twenty years mm-hmm. as my everyday vehicle. Mm-hmm. I inherited it from my father, brand new. Basically, he he bought it brand new and then got diagnosed with a terminal illness and mm. ended up passing away soon after. Mm. And so that was about nineteen and a half years ago. I've been driving the car. Uh, it's a Subaru race car. Mm-hmm. Um, long story short, uh, I've been taking it only to dealers, and my local dealer kind of wrecked it the last time they serviced it, trying to install a clutch and destroyed the transmission and did a bunch of damage and basically ru- ruined the car for me. So they're going to so pay you for the car? Uh, they, we made a deal. We came to a deal oh. uh, that avoided anyone going to court. And so they're going to sell me a new car and give me a bunch of money off on it. Basically to make the equivalent cool. of the value of the other car. Yeah. Plus a little bit over, I think. Cause and you're, and you're, well, yeah, I'm sure there's margin in that thing. I'm so a good customer. there's margin in them that are their uh, deals. So, uh, so you're so getting a brand play. new Subaru. Yes. Okay, so that that deal's base done. Model, base model, basically. That deal is done. And what are you spending so here's there? The thing. What are you spending on that car? Uh, it's going to cost about twenty five thousand. Okay, what's your household income? Uh, our household income is about two hundred. Okay, and you're wanting to spend what uh, on your wife's 20, car? Twenty. So here's the thing: the dealer felt bad, and he told me. I told him my wife needed some work on her vehicle as well then, and he said he would give her the same deal he's given me if I wanted to buy her one. So I wasn't thinking about getting her one before he said that. He's going to give you the price of your old car off of your wife's and your car or just a good price? No, he's basically going to give me all the money he's given me off my deal, and he said he'll do the same thing for her. He'll give her the same money off as if he wrecked her car. And just because he feels bad, he says. How much so was the, how much value deal. how much did they give you for your old car? For the old car, uh, it's leaking out of the head. Now, how much money did they right give now. you for your old car? Oh, for my old car. Yeah. Uh, they basically gave me about four four thousand for my car. Okay, and well, they, and then they knocked off how the much more? The car. Then they knocked off how much more? Then they knocked off another three. Okay, so they're going to knock 7000 off of another Subaru if you buy two in a row. Basically, yeah. And and your wife is driving what now? She's driving a Subaru that's... Uh, about, What's it worth? About 100 uh, It would be worth about seven or eight, except that it's got to have the leaky head gasket fixed, yeah. which okay. will cost three to four. All right, so it's gonna, it's gonna, you're going to be able to sell it for five, right? Yeah, if I fix it. Yeah. No, if you don't fix it. If you fix it, it'll sell for uh, seven maybe. or eight. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's drivable. It's just got a leaky head gasket, and it's an old Correct. freaking Subaru. Now, how much? What is your net worth? Miles. What is your net worth? Net worth? I just did a calculation. I think our if I go by just net worth, we're at about two hundred and thirty-ish thousand, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. Between equity, and you have and the money. cash to pay for all these cars. No. Uh, well, uh, only if I take money out of a Roth account or something. So No, no. we're not buying these cars. We're not buying cars with yeah, Roth money. I only money. have the cash to pay for one car. Okay. Okay. Um, but my mother's been telling me, you know, maybe I should be buying some reliable cars for the... Yeah, maybe you should, but maybe you shouldn't be money. going and taking your retirement money out to do that. You probably... I, I'm going to pass on no, the... Gonna I'm going to pass payment. on the second one, because I don't recommend people buy new cars that go down in value like a rock, except for in the last 12 months. Um, 
uh, unless they have a net worth of in excess of a million dollars, because that way you can accept the blow on that. So I would save up some money, and I would buy your wife a better car that is used, and I would forego this sweet dealer's offer, which is really not that great an offer anyway. It's an okay offer, but it wasn't like he gave you like half off the stinking thing or something. So yeah. I mean, he, he basically gave up his margins is what he did, and he's got you back on the hook for more work in the – uh, and, and everything else in the in the shop but no i, I i'll pass on the second one uh, i would save up and buy her a better car and cash for it and i would not cash out my retirement but we don't borrow money to buy cars we don't buy cars where the total of all your vehicles is more than half your annual income and i don't buy brand new cars unless they're a million dollars unless you have a million dollar net worth or greater and here's why because they go down in value and you need to be concentrating on things that go up in value yeah and and in this situation i'd go and fix the subaru for the wife and then save up, save up. You're going to get a decent amount. I think, Dave, you're right. You're going to get seven or eight for it if it's fixed up. And then you put that into the savings, and all of a sudden we've upgraded pretty substantially without any kind of debt. It is doable. But and people not, get the itch. And I, I don't I don't fix $6,000 cars at the dealership either. No. Uh, I fix $6,000 cars at independent mechanics where the cost is about half of what it is to fix a car at a dealership. And so um, if you have a brand new vehicle and, you know, whatever, and you spend a ton of money on it, you make a lot of money and you want to take it in for the dealer to service it, that's one thing. But you don't take a $6,000 car into a head gasket job into the dealership. You're going to pay double what you'd pay with an independent good mechanic shopping around. So do some shopping around. I, I'm not doing it. No. No. So A Subaru with 100,000 miles is just getting warmed up. <laughs> yeah, well, that's okay. I mean, I don't mind him moving up and no, you, you know, but you can oh, fix oh, by the it way, by, oh, I forgot to tell you the federal law too. Wife gets the good car. <laughs> it's exactly that's the federal right. law. That's so right. that means she gets the new one. You get the one with the busted head gasket. Y'all are about to trade cars out. <laughs> so this is how that works. That's yeah. a marriage thing. They're just helping you. Oh, open phones at triple eight eight two five five two two five. Dylan's with us in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Hi, Dylan. How are you? Hey, good afternoon. I'm doing very well. How are you today? Better than we deserve, sir. How can we help? Good. Uh, so I have a general question. Uh, I took a job with a church in Philadelphia last year in September. They offered me a $60,000 salary, but it's basically a package deal. Um, I'm currently 23 years old. I'm married. I do own a house with my wife. We purchased in December of last year. And... Basically, part of the deal is that right now I'm on my parents' insurance, but the church does offer full health insurance, full medical, but I'm going to lose $18,000 of my salary. So uh, the church is paying me that $18,000 currently, so I'm bringing home like $58,000 Why would a your year. insurance be $1,500 a month? I have no clue, and I I had worked for uh, Walmart prior to this, and I know the family insurance was a lot cheaper, and I'm just trying to navigate how to approach this because I don't want to get two years. So basically from, from now, two years from now, I'm going to lose $18,000 of my salary due to health insurance. Small church? Um, not quite. Um, it's a larger church. They employ 350 people. Mm. They do have a full school. Their health insurance um, plan so, sucks. Yeah, it's bad. But you got it's, two it's years. Pretty, yeah. I have two years to prepare for this. So the reason I wanted to get your professional advice on this was that I'm trying to navigate what to do. So currently, I am a property caretaker and I'm an apprentice to literally every trade. So I'm learning mechanics, I'm learning plumbing, electrical, everything with this job. Do you want to be full-time ministry or do you want to add one of these trades as a part-time gig to supplement? Which one? I think my desire is to be full-time ministry. Then, then do the that. trades on the side to make up for the, the increased cost of insurance. You got two years to figure this deal out. Go shopping on the health insurance yeah. and see if you can't buy in the independent market cheaper, too. But I would stay in the ministry seat. That's the seat you want to be in. Don't yeah. let health insurance drive you out of your dream. Yep.
Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the famous debt-free stage. Anthony and Larisha are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, We're doing Ken. well. Great. Where do y'all live? <laughs> Morristown, New Jersey. All right, and that is near... Right outside of Philadelphia, okay. 15 minutes. Okay, cool. Welcome to Nashville. Looks like you brought the teenagers with you. What are their names and ages? Aisha and Joshua. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aisha's 20, Joshua's 19. Okay, not quite teenagers. Sorry about that. That's all right. All right. Cool. <laughs> Very cool. Good to have you guys. All right, how much debt did you pay off? Well, we paid off uh, $180,000 in, in 48 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Uh, we started out at about 70000 and this year we are looking to make about 200000 Whoa. Whoa, nice jump. What do you all do for a living? I'm an executive secretary. Mm -hmm. And I lead a shared services team. Oh, very good. Okay, cool. So nice income jump. Yes. The income jump early in that 48-month track or late in that track? Later late, on. Late in the track. And also, I, I've got a consulting business that I had, but I decided to actually start working it. God, so okay. That so is that what that, did you sell something big too? No. Okay. No. You just cash flowed your way through this. Yeah. So you be, 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 be $45,000. Uh, did I do that right? Yeah. $45,000 yeah. a year. About Roughly $50,000 a year yeah. average through there. Good. What kind of debt was the 180000 We paid off our mortgage. Whoa. Yes. Look at that weird yes. people. Yes, indeed. Praise God. Way to go, weird people. <laughs> Normal's broken. You guys are officially weird. How old are you two? I'm 50. I'm 50. All right. 50 years old with a paid for house. What's this house worth? It's worth about $500,000. Yip, 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 yip. I love it. And how much is in your retirement accounts? Well, we're not quite there yet. We're about 100000 short from being millionaires. So All right. We, we so $900,000 net worth, yeah. and you're 50 years old, yes. and you're making two hundred a year. Right. Yes. You rock. We do. I love it. Way to go, man. Yes, it That is so stinking yeah. cool. So you're going to be a millionaire in 20 minutes. Stock market goes back up. You'll be a millionaire right then. That one yeah. thing. Oh, my gosh, man. Way to go, guys. So proud of you. So what starts this journey four years ago? I mean, you're like 45 years old, and you're sitting around and go, uh, we got to change. What happened? We did. Um, Dave, we were uh, Davish mm -hmm. for like 10 years, mm -hmm. and we had never heard of you. And well, we then you couldn't out. be Davish. You were just Ish. Yeah, we were Ish. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we were following Larry Burkett and never heard of You were uh, Larry Ish. We were Larry Ish. Uh, okay. And then we heard Larry's of this guy. Larry's harder core than I am. He, he is. He is. He was, yeah. He's yeah. passed. Yeah. yeah, we thought we were doing all right. And then uh, we were living in Michigan. We kept hearing people talk about this Dave Ramsey. We're like, who's Dave Ramsey? And... Uh, uh, it pivoted something in our heads and then we moved and next door neighbors to our left they uh were always going away it seemed like like they had like a summer house and just the peace about them made us stop and think wow we we'd like to do that and then we had some other neighbors both of them all very nice but uh just working hard, always seemed tired, working on the boat, always problems with the boat. We said we have to make a change. We were looking at our kids, and we had another friend a little bit older, and uh, he was doing a lot of good stuff in his life, and we said, all right, 
we're mentoring people. We've got Aisha and Joshua, and we're seeing how listening to you and the tools that you give, what it's doing to their lives, we said we need to do something different. And we hit it hard. Okay. Every little bit of money, money from the consulting work Anthony was doing in our job, we put it towards the mortgage. Yeah. So you're making like 70, you sit down, you look, you got $180,000. We crank the shovel up, we can get out of this hole quick. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I, Makes it believable. Makes you want to go do it. It really does. You know, Gives based, you hope. Based on our income, I thought... I said, well, I can do a little bit more consulting. I think I could do it in about seven years. But then I said, you know what? Something happens when we do the Dave Ramsey plan, when people do it. I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put four years down as my marker. And we hit it exactly four years. Yes. I said, oh, I probably should have put three years down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Interesting. I want you to stay on that thought. I know where you were going because we've been here and we've watched a lot of these stories. So you put that out. You said something happens to Dave Ramsey people. Right. Uh, I want you to unpack that a little bit more. What do you see? Because that's coming from your view. You saw, okay, I've seen this. So I, I, I shortened my goal. What do you think happens when people get focused? Well, I think you just start concentrating on what you want to do, right? If if you need money to pay off a mortgage, then you're going to find money. That's right. I mean, our income went up because I was working in a nonprofit job. I've heard Dave say a lot of times, you don't have to only do good work in nonprofits. So I got a for-profit, I work with a for-profit company doing very similar work, but I did at, at the nonprofit, yet my salary went up quite a bit. And then when I started consulting more, something interesting happened too. As I started paying things off more, I didn't need the money consulting like I used to. So then people would, people kept calling me saying, hey, can you work with me? I said, no, I'm busy. Oh, oh please come work with me. I, I give them some number that I thought was appropriate and they just pay it. I said, well, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. What happens when you, when, you, when you change your perspective, when you're not desperate anymore, people respond to that and yeah. the income goes up. There's something about boldness, yes. right? When you're bold and you put yourself out there, uh, then providence moves. It's a wonderful quote by a German philosopher. Goethe used to say that. When we step out and we're bold, providence moves in ways that we never could have seen possible. Right. And that's right. your story. Right. It's really amazing. Yes. Wow. That's fun. Way to go, you guys. You. Well, we, we also wanted to say that, so Aisha, she's going to be a senior at, in college, and Joshua, Joshua's he's a, a, sophomore. a sophomore in college, and both of them are going through college debt-free. Wow. They, yes, they, they they've are. got scholarships. They're working. You know, yes, they're they're hitting they're, it hard. They're, they're, doing, they're doing a fantastic job, so we wanted to be sure that we yeah. Absolutely. So what, what are they studying, and where are they in school? Well, Aisha's going to graduate from Rutgers. She's going nice. to be a speech pathologist. A speech pathologist. Woo! Yes. Way to go. Scarlet Knights. That's yeah. right. That's okay. right. And, All right. And, and, and Josh was in, uh, in community college. He's, he's a business major. Great. Yes. Good. Great. Two good Fantastic. roles. Two, two good, good decisions. Roles. Yes. Well done. Good careers. Oh, man, you guys are so smart. <laughs> yes. You have completely changed your family tree. Yes, You're amazing. Have. You're amazing. Heroes. Look at you. I love it. Way to go, you guys. There, That is amazing. So well done. So very well done. All right, we got a copy of uh, the Baby Steps Millionaire's book for you because that's the next chapter in your story. That's As we right. said, you're about 20 minutes away from that. Yeah, so right. maybe by the time you get home, it'll already be across the line. But <laughs> right, right there. And uh, also a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Financial Peace University uh, membership for a year, the brand new videos in that that just came out. Best Financial Peace University we've ever had. If you've already been through it and you want to give that away, give that away with that Total Money Makeover book, you can. It's all yours just to say thank you for making the trip to Nashville and to say we're proud of you. We are very proud of you. Thank You're you so much. Thank you. Incredible thank you. Incredible people. Very, very well done. Anthony and Larisha, Aisha and Joshua from uh, the Philly area, making a hundred, or paid off 180000 house and everything. They're weirdos. They did it in 48 months, making seventy to two hundred. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free. Debt -free. Yeah. 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 I love it. Man, so powerful. Ken, the thing that I didn't understand when I first started teaching this stuff, the borrower is slave to the lender. When you're out from under slavery, more things come loose than just the math. Yes. Yeah. And that's what happened with his consulting work. Um, I generally find that people make different, better, wiser, more lucrative career decisions 
when they don't have a knife hanging over the top of their head anymore. Yeah, it's true. Because they don't have this sense of desperation. They walk different than a slave does. You talk different than a slave does. It changed me. Yeah. My, I made biz- different business decisions with cash yeah. than with debt. Oh yeah. I make better business decisions when I don't feel threatened by the mm-hmm. marketplace. I'm not threatened by inflation. I'm not threatened by yeah. uh, real estate prices. I'm not threatened by the cost to fill up my Raptor, even though it does make me want to pass out, <laughs> but I'm not threatened by it because I don't have any debt. Yeah. And it puts me in a completely different position, and that's what happens. Your income generally will go up more rapidly and more, and, and both. Not yeah. only will it go up more, but it will go up more rapidly than if you were not working a plan because you're an independent thinker. You walk with a swagger. It's a different world. Yeah. It's so a big true. deal. Well done. I'm so proud of those guys. What a great family. Yes. Changed their family tree. Debt-free college and everything. Whoop, whoop. This is The Ramsey Show. Time for us to talk about the real estate market. Everybody's asking a million questions. Should I wait to buy a house? Is it a good time to sell? Is the housing market going to crash? What's going to happen with interest rates? On July 14th, we're hosting a free special live stream event called Real Estate Reality Check. George Camel, Rachel Cruz, and I are going to answer all your questions, unpack actual data, not your brother-in-law's emotions, not somebody that watches too much Fox News or CNN, where they're in freak-out mode. We're actually going to look at actual data and history and put this whole market in perspective. And um, we'll go ahead and spoiler alert, tell you the market's not going to crash. And we're going to show you exactly why and what you're facing. This organization at Ramsey is always about telling you the truth as we can perceive it, as we know from 30 years of experience in these markets, and the truth usually revolves around hope. We're not in the business of selling fear porn. We're going to just tell you the truth, and it's not necessarily even exciting. Actually, what we teach people to do, live on less than you make, live on a budget. These are not exciting things. The results, however, are exciting. You deserve to make decisions based on facts and not fear. If you're wondering whether you ought to buy or sell a house, whether the housing market's going to crash, what makes it crash, how this stuff works, this live stream is just for you. We're going to spend about an hour unpacking all of that. It's completely free. Real estate reality check. You need to sign up for it in advance. It will be July the 14th, just a few weeks away. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash reality check. RamseySolutions.com slash reality check. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. With free samples, free shipping, and new promos they run all the time, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best possible deal. Today's question comes from Nathan in Indiana. I'm 22 years old and currently work 32 hours a week at $19 an hour, building crates for artwork. It's a far better job than I've had before in my employer is great, but I'm concerned because it offers little advancement. I can't decide whether I should continue with uh, uh, this current job or take a risk and get a different job in a trade like electronics or construction where I'm guaranteed pay increases with each year of experience. Trade jobs are high in demand where I live, so apprenticeships are easy to get. My goal is to be financially independent as soon as possible. Should I stay where I am or pursue another career? It's going to be both and. You're going to stay where you are until you figured out the trade you want to be in, if in fact that's where you want to go, and you lock in that apprenticeship. So what we really want you to do is stay where you are until you find a new ladder to climb. Love that you want financial independence. I love that you've seen that, hey, I'm limited here. I have a lid on where I am, and that's okay. Don't accept the lid, but we don't just jump. There's nothing romantic or exciting about that at all. It can be financially devastating. So stay where you are. 
until you find that new opportunity to step into. And Dave, I'm very excited about this question because, you know, America, our American economy really was built on apprenticeships. And this idea of the paid apprenticeships in the trades is certainly still very much alive. It's a great way to get paid to learn. And uh, I love this option, Nathan. Uh, really good question. Yeah, absolutely. It, so I'm reading into your words, Nathan, as Ken was, into how you use your words, even the sentence structure and the way you're asking the question. I'm a little bit afraid, and I'm going to warn you against, you take a $23 an hour job and you leave a $19 an hour job because it's in a trade and it represents good advancement, but it ends up being something you hate. And you did it for $4 an hour and for advancement in something you hate. If you advance in something you hate, it means you hate it more. Don't do that. Okay. So Ken is right. Slow down a little bit and let's, the trades are valid. It's a great place to make a lot of money. There's a lot of welders and diesel mechanics making hundred K making a lot more than somebody who got a degree in left-handed sociology puppetry from uh, medieval art. <laughs> Or whatever, right? I mean, you get these ridiculous degrees now, and you pay two hundred thousand dollars for them, and they're useless. It makes you a barista, and so um, that that's you, you don't want to end up there. Right. So I, I I applaud you on your direction. You're being willingness to do hard work, build crates, to do trades with your hands, and uh, now. But what you really have got to get into is not the near term, or even the next five years, mm -hmm. but think out forty years. Okay. Are you, do you still see yourself as an electrician when you're 53 or 63? And then if that's the case and you think that's a great, and by the way, being an electrician is a great trade, but if you don't see yourself doing that, if you're only doing it for $4 and because you can make more as an apprentice and that feels better than being in a quote dead end thing, unquote, um, that's the wrong move. Yeah. And, and that's what I like about the apprenticeship. I'm getting paid to try it. But before we even get to the apprenticeship, how do you do this? Well, you've got to spend time with some guys that have been doing it for 25, 30 years. Yeah. And, and they're going to tell you the ins, the outs, the ups, the downs. Do you want to take that trade and then eventually become an entrepreneur where you start your own business in that trade? So it's absolutely the right advice, Dave. you got to look at the long view. And it's got to be about heart. It can't just be about head. What I mean by that is it can't just be money related. I've got to really find meaning in the work and have an opportunity to make a lot of money. Samantha's in Houston. Hi, Samantha. The Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So my husband and I have about $150,000 worth of debt, 90000 of which is car loans. Good one. Um, Yes, it's insane. Um, we have talked about um, selling our vehicles. I went to uh, some places and got an appraisal. Um, both of us are quite upside down on the vehicle. You must so have rolled I some negative equity from the other deal into it. Yes, well, I guess so. I mean, uh, when I traded my car in, I thought that I was right on par, but I was not. And my husband knew he was negative. Um, so we, I went to my credit union. I asked them to roll the negative into a personal loan. They denied me two different times. Um, I am just at a loss what to do right now. Our car notes are extremely high. Um, okay, so tell me about car number one. What is it? Okay, so car number one, my husband's truck, uh, the loan on that is 53000 and um, it's a Ford F-150. The car payment is $1,034 a month. Good God. All right, and yeah. um, what the uh, uh, what did they tell you that that was worth? Um, they're telling us that it's about 20000 negative, so 33000 is the value of the truck. How many miles on it? How old is this truck? Yes. Uh, the How many miles? I believe it's about 40,000 miles. How old is What year is the truck? 2019. Uh, go to com. Yeah, that's garbage. That's, that's bull deal, crap. That's a dealer offer. Did you get more than one place to look at this? Uh, yes. I, he went to um, a Ford dealership, and he's also talked to CarMax. Um I talked to CarMax today, actually, and got an appraisal on mine. I'll tell you about, tell you about that next. Okay. Um, that sounds very low in this market, okay. for sure. Used cars are still selling very high. I would check kellybluebook.com and start looking at a private sale. I'm shocked to hear that a 2019 is 20 grand upside down. Now, he rolled some negative into it to start with. You said that, but that's a lot. Okay. And, then, and your yeah. car then is what? 
It's a 2020 Ford Explorer. Um, the car that the, the loan that I that I owe is thirty six thousand. Uh, payment is five seventy three a month. And uh, today I got it appraised at CarMax for twenty seven five. Okay, well that means you can get uh, thirty two for it private sale probably. So that one's okay. within that one's within striking range. What's your um, meaning you could go get that other 4000 out of your income in the next few months. Uh, what's your income? Our income is 140000 That's good news. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. Yours is probably going first because it's easier to get rid of. Right. Because it's closer. I'm also going to check the numbers because I want to make sure he didn't just not want to sell his truck. Oh, and I, I don't think that's what it is. But, <laughs> but yes, please check. It's just, it's like... Those numbers just don't feel, I mean, I haven't pulled it up and looked at it, but that feels awfully wrong. But yeah, you're right. A $1,000 and a $600 car payment, those are two good things to get rid of. And get you get you a hoop, couple of hoopties, because y'all been doing stupid car disease for a long time. Bless your heart. I'm sorry. You are stuck in a mess. But you have identified the problem, kiddo. And now the trick is to get out of it. You doing any good over there? Yeah, I, let me tell you right now, private markets is where they need to be looking. They're getting a dealer offer. Oh, well, yeah, it's trade-in value. Yeah. But the, the truck, did it? Did you find anything on it? Yeah, I found some stuff. You're looking at forty-five to $55,000 for that. I didn't think 33 was right. Okay. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey, folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know the Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? It's your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from the Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. We help people build wealth. We've created more millionaires by showing them how and causing them to do it than most anybody else out there. We help people do work that they love, find a place to make a lot more money, and doing something you actually love. We help people create and maintain actual amazing relationships as opposed to digital relationships. Did anybody ever tell you those friends on Facebook aren't real friends? Well, maybe someone should tell you that. They're not your real friends. But Dave, they really like my cat. They videos. won't. They like your cat laser pictures. They won't show up at two in the morning when your tire's flat. I'll that's, just tell you that's that. True. Open phones at triple eight eight two five five two two five. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. Starting off this hour is David in Boise, Idaho. Hi, David. How are you? Hey, fellas. How y'all doing? Better than we deserve, sir. How can we help? <laughs> Um, so my question comes, I'm looking for some advice. Mm -hmm. So I'm in this eight year beautiful relationship with the woman of my dreams and she's very much the free spirit and I'm very much the nerd and I'm trying to reel all of that in. <laughs> I've got the bug for getting debt free. I think we've accumulated probably about 60,000 in debt. We both, you know, I think we're bringing about 10,000 a month, but She's an in-the-moment person, so and I'm trying to. She wants me to do it first, and then she'll jump on board once she sees me start tackling it. And then she said she will join me, but I'm finding that very frustrating in the sense that she'll blow through some paychecks, and then I'm dipping more into my budget than than I need to be doing. So I guess my question would be, how do I? How do I? I mean, is that possible? Because I find it, it's just frustrating and it's causing more fights than anything. Hmm. How old are you? Uh, we're both 38. Okay. All right. Well, um, let me first, uh, let, let's reset the stage. There's not a we. You're not married. Right. You're having an argument with your roommate about how your roommate handles money. And that's, that's a, yeah. that is a relational problem, but it's also a financial problem because it's very, very difficult uh, to 
pretend like you're married financially when you're not because the whole dynamic has shifted because there's all the legalities involved. Um, you know, there's no there's no incentives involved. You're still just shacking up and you're 38 years old. And so you're going to you're really going to struggle trying to pull this together and act like it's marriage when it's not. I'll just tell you from 30 years of coaching people, that's the truth. And I'm not trying to pick yeah. on you or tell you you're doing something wrong. I'm just telling you it's, it's yeah. a very difficult dynamic to pull off. Um, yeah. So what I would do is um, eight years, is, you know, you're asking us what we would do. Here's what we would do. Here's what we tell you to do. If you're my son, I've got, a, I've got a daughter your age. If you were my son, I would say here's the thing to do. Eight years, long enough time to paint or get off the ladder, you know. It, you know, you need yep. to decide whether this is real, whether it's going to go forward or not. We're not just shacking up for sex now. This is a real thing. And so we got to make a call here. Uh, that's what I would tell my son if he asked me. And, um, and, and he was your age. And so you're going to struggle to prosper relationally until you make that call. And you're going to struggle to prosper financially and with the arithmetic while you're trying to make that call because she's legally got a set of responsibilities. You legally have a set of responsibilities and they legally are not combined. The law, all of the people you do business with, everyone recognizes you only as two individuals instead of one household unit. And yet you use the words we like your income is somehow combined. It is not. You have zero legal access to each other's income at this stage of the game. So that's what I would tell you to do, number one. Number two, okay. then, is as a part of that process, get some good pre-marriage counseling and start to work on these differences in your identities and in the way you're approaching money. There's nothing wrong with one of you being a free spirit and one of you being the nerd. As a matter of fact, that's most couples that have successful marriages. They learn to navigate all of that. But when we as a husband and wife have a vision for the future and we are committing to becoming and staying debt-free so that we can ha travel the world, buy nice cars, be unbelievably generous and retire with dignity, change our family tree, then we need to stick to the plan that we both agreed to. But there's not a we right now. Yeah, and I'm going to go back to something you said, David. Uh, Dave, uh, Dave gave you the fatherly advice. I'm going to be your big brother for a moment uh, yeah. you said that her response to this was well i want to see you do it see you live out the baby steps and then right. i'll get on board so my quick question i got a couple things here are you living it out are you attempting to do it with your paycheck yes and so she's seen I you am. do it she's seen you do it for how long uh, I've been going steady for about six months. Okay, so for um, six months. Knocking out some debt. Right, so she's seen you do it for six months, and she's still on the sidelines. As your older brother for just this call, I have some real concerns here because the woman of your dreams could be the woman of your nightmares if she doesn't get on board here. And I, I appreciate what Dave is saying, but i got to tell you, um, I would be having a serious conversation uh, before you decide to get married, even before you go into premarital counseling. And I think it comes down to this. I think you got to stop trying to convince her. And I think you got to harness her dreams in this conversation and cast some vision. And, and, and it's a simple construct. Hey, here's the problem in the way that you're living with your money. This is what it's going to lead to. This is what it's gotten you to. Here's the solution, this process I've learned over here. And if we do this, it's going to give us financial peace and then our dreams can be bigger than ever and we can do this. I, Dave, I got to tell you, I want to, I want to know if she's going to catch this vision before they even get serious about marriage because that really concerns me because of the, the, the rate of divorce, you know, if she can't get on board with this. Yeah, you got, well, that's what I'm saying, in pre-marriage counseling yeah, or some, or some yeah. other way, you've got to get on the same page. Um, or this is going to end poorly. Because, really by bad. the way, it's going to end poorly anyway. That's right. If we don't fix this, it's just going to be an ugly breakup. That's correct. You know, and now we're going to be fighting over who gets the mustard because we got confused about who had who what where the condiments in the refrigerator came from you know i mean mayonnaise is mine dad gummit and so you know i mean that that's what you that's how you fight with your roommate yeah. but you don't end up fighting with your spouse that way that's right it's a different fight with your spouse so yeah you 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 guys need to be going okay where do we want to go financially with our lives and what is the best route to get there not I'm your daddy and you need to behave, yeah. not you have to prove it to me because I don't think you can do it. 
and I think this is unrealistic and I think you're gonna fall off the wagon and then I'm gonna have an excuse to not follow through. Instead, look at it and go, as a couple, where do we wanna be in 40 years and what are our steps to get there? I did pick 40 years, not so randomly. Yesterday was my 40th. If you haven't seen the picture, go to Dave's Instagram account. It is she's First stunningly all, beautiful. She's absolutely she's beautiful. A beautiful woman now, but I mean, wow. and the amount of hair you had plus I was the a, ascot. I was a worth. pretty good salesman. I'm just saying. That's all. I'm just saying. And so, yeah, but I mean, can you imagine all the stuff we've been through? Two hillbillies yeah. fighting for 40 years. Oh my God, brutal. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. My co-host today, Mark's with us in St. Louis. Hey, Mark, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking the call. Sure. What's up? Uh, I was wondering about donor-advised funds and trying to use that as a way to uh, be able to increase the amount of giving we're doing as a family, as well as uh, for the kind of one-time giving if there's just something that uh, comes up, having a good area where funds are growing uh, to be able to give out of. Uh, one of my mentors had told me it was a way that him and his wife had up to their giving by about 50% when they started doing it and hadn't heard it mentioned at all on the show before. Okay. Uh, well, they're excellent. There are several excellent ones uh, out there that do a good job. Uh, the concept of donor advised funds is obviously the, uh, you are the donor, you're placing money into an account and you have to advise the fund where the money is to be given to. Um, and, and it has to be to a 501c3 in that case. Okay. So yeah, otherwise, if you don't, then it's not going to, there's no tax advantage to it whatsoever. Uh, you'll get yourself in a pinch. So you, you know, it's all to 501c3. It does not increase giving unless you just increase your giving. It's just a vehicle through which you pass money directly to the nonprofits. The only big difference is it encourages you to keep it top of mind giving, and it helps you systematize your giving somewhat, which is all good. And what to your point earlier, it allows you to hold money past the calendar year. And so if you don't want to give, if you don't have a... Uh, a ministry or a nonprofit picked out that you want to give it to, and you want to put $50,000 aside in December, you can do that and write that off as a charitable gift and then decide later who to give it to. But it has to be given to a nonprofit in that process. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That, yeah, that confirm what you've been told? Is just, uh, no, that sounds very similar to it. He's, he was saying that increase in giving was – as much that once you've put it into the fund, there's no longer that hesitation of it's coming out of your checkbook. So it was more of an intentional, if I put this month, this much in on a monthly basis, 
you don't accidentally book that trip with the money that you're planning on giving. Good. On yeah. I, okay. Day. I agree with that. But I mean, once I set money aside for giving in my mind, it's gone. I don't, I no longer emotionally struggle with that, but I'm so freaking compartmentalized after all the years of doing it. And so we, we moved in the direction of a personal foundation, which is a, the next step up, uh, much more expensive to operate, much more expensive to put in place. Donor advised funds cost almost nothing to run. And so, um, but we wanted to be able to do some things, uh, with, uh, some individuals like a single mom or something like that, buy somebody a car that was uh, struggling or something like that without them having to be a 501 C three and all. And so donor advised wouldn't work for that plan, but it works perfectly for what you're talking about. And it is a really good, uh, intermediate step. Uh, f- for your first level of, of outrageous generosity. It's much better than just leaving the money sitting in a checking account and accidentally buying a couch with it. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think we're on the side, like if it's a give somebody the car type option, let's just run those out of the checking account and do it as a gift donation right off on those instead if we're not. I mean, just my wife and I, we're not anywhere near the level of a foundation at this point in time. Yeah, yeah, so. it's a good. it's a really good first step. And uh, there's um, there's two or three that have been around a long time. Uh, they've been very popular in the evangelical Christian community. Uh, Larry Burkett, Ron Blue, uh, both uh, made them popular. Have served on some of the boards. They're both friends. Or were friends. Larry's past, but Ron is still uh, still a good friend. They both. That's the first time I ever heard about it. And, and the generous giving guys out of uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, do a lot of work with outrageous generosity as well. Uh, particularly in the faith spectrum, and uh, they've been tied into some of the donor advised funds. It's a really good way to look at it. So it's a good question. Thanks for calling us. Can the giving part of what we teach is essential to winning because it releases you, mm-hmm. um, if you can compartmentalize it like I'm talking about, or you move the money over into that? There's something that happens once you decide the money's not yours. Yeah. Well, and your behavior, as, as you said, we've decided we're going to give this much. And so we live differently. Uh, we begin to see the return on investment in a different category. When we're really giving intentionally, you begin to go, wow, this is legacy stuff, not just uh, 401k, mutual fund stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it really does change your entire perspective. And you know what's interesting is that I think that that you you in some way set yourself up, and I don't want this to be misunderstood. That if I I'm going to make more money, I don't I don't believe that uh, as an action, but I do believe that your behavior changes and your perspective changes so much that there's a good chance you're going to end up making more money because of that uh, change in perspective and belief. Well, I mean, let's just face it: we all can smell a taker. Mm-hmm. Versus a giver. That's a good way of saying that, yeah. And when you are a giver Mm -hmm. physically, logistically, uh, it changes the way you smell. It changes the way you walk. It changes the way you smile. You're the person that opens the door for somebody that's got their arms full of stuff, you know? The taker just runs through and doesn't even notice they're there. Uh, And at different times in my life, I've been more one than the other. Mm -hmm, Sure. Uh, You know, so it's okay wherever you start out. But generosity is not a, a magical DNA factor. It's a decision. Yes, that's correct. And it just really puts into motion, as you said, it's a likability factor. You just have a spirit about you. And, well, who uh, tends to get promoted? People yeah. that are takers or people that are givers? Givers. I yeah. mean, in corporate America where there's politics, maybe the taker. <laughs> That's true. Or maybe on an, HB, oh, yeah. maybe on an HBO special. For a special. season. For a season. Yeah. The takers can get ahead for a while. But, but it comes back. It does. It really it does. does. And the boomerang effect is bloody. It's yes. bad. But yep. the, the giver is who, you know, if you're leading two people and you have the perception of wisdom and you actually believe as their leader, one of them is a giver, one of them is a taker, you're going to promote the giver every time mm. because you know, they're going to prosper the people under them that are, that they're leading the customers that they're serving. They're going to prosper them. They're all about generosity and that generosity, just the way they hold their face is different. Yes. It's everything and it changes everything. So yeah, it's an act you want to intentionally plug into and, um, the, uh, the, that's the process, you know, and just, it's, it's fun. And important to point out too, for those of you that are right now, baby step two, gazelle intense, you can still give of your time and you can give of your talents in this season. Mario is with us in New York city. Hey, Mario, what's up? Hey Dave. Uh, thanks for taking my call. I appreciate it. Sure. How can we um, help? 
Yeah, I'm 46 years old. I'll be turning 47 in a couple of months. Uh, and uh, my question is this. Apparently, I had a house uh, where we live in right now, and uh, I had a 30-year mortgage. Um, I ended up paying that off in about uh, 12 years. Good. And uh, I paid off the uh, the mortgage about a year and a half ago. Good. Uh, so um, I have uh, about 1.3 sitting in the bank right now. Uh-huh. In cash, uh-huh. I have about two hundred seventy-five thousand in the stock market, uh-huh. with the uh, ten or about fifteen to twenty percent correction that we already had. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm in the market, and I found this property, which is about a four-family home, uh, will produce about seven thousand dollars a month in rental, uh-huh. and it costs uh, a one point two million, and. Um, I was thinking to uh, purchase it all cash, uh, 1.2 cash, and then that would leave me with 90000 in the savings account for emergency fund. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of... Uh, What's no, your household income? Uh, 350000 Okay. I would want to build your retained earnings up more quickly if you drain yourself down this far on one property. Because if you have a major event at that property and loss of rent or uh, a repair you could really get yourself in a pinch there that's that's pretty tight but if you're going to write a check and pay cash for it uh for god's sakes offer them a low ball number try to get a deal on it um you know I, i'm going to shoot it anytime i buy investment property i'm trying to buy it at a deal and i'm trying to write a check for it cash i can close it friday but it's going to have to be a deal otherwise i don't do it and uh, I, just, I made a lot of money doing that with rental properties. So, um, yeah, that's where you want to start. I, yeah, I would buy it, but I want you to build that return to earnings back up as fast as possible. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org backslash budget. We absolutely believe in it. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, Phil and Mary are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Good, Dave. Great. Where do you guys live? Rockford, Illinois. Cool. Welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you paid off? Paid off $45,000 in uh, 17 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Uh, about 90 to 100. Good for you guys. Cool. What kind of debt was the 45000 uh, we had two cars, we had a little bit of a student loan, and we said had some uh, house uh, remodeling. Ah, okay, cool. How long y'all been married? 12 years. I'll let her answer that. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Okay, so after 12 years of marriage, 18, 24 months ago, you look up and say, something's got to change. Tell me the story. What happened? Uh, kind of a two-parter, Dave. Whew. Whew. It's okay. <laughs> Big day. Uh, kind of a two-parter. Uh, initially, we were doing Davish. We had about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt, mm-hmm. and uh, our youngest was one, and our second was on his way. Mm-hmm. And uh, I looked at the budget and I said, I don't know how we're going to afford daycare. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just miraculously, uh, I coach football, and one of the coaches just happened to mention that uh, him and his wife were almost debt-free. Mm-hmm. And I started thinking about, like, wow, you can actually be debt-free. You know, how does that work? And uh, I also bartend. And uh, so one night, I got off a shift, and I was driving home, and I flipped on the radio, and I just caught some guy's debt-free scream. Very powerful. Uh, Started tearing up almost like I am right now, Uh you know. And uh, listened and listened, and uh, I said, I think we got to do this. 
And so uh, eventually we signed up for the course. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's just been pedal down since. Mm -hmm. We really committed uh, 17 months ago. So that was Dave-ish, and it was a, a pretty hard Dave-ish. Mm -hmm. um, but 17 months ago, we had a huge hailstorm and uh, had some damage to our house. And so, you know, we only had $15,000 of that initial debt left. We had some margin in our budget, started to feel comfortable. And uh, with the hail damage, we, we took advantage. We, we thought, oh, we can put some money into the house now, get a new front door, get some new siding. And the guy said, yeah, no problem. We have financing. And the real kick, you know, the punch to the gut, I got in the mail, I got a credit card. And I, poof, I just thought, oof. I just thought we're not we're not doing it. Uh, we're not doing it again. It's over. So, 17 months of a sprint. You know, I've been trying to think of analogies. Uh, listened to the show a lot and, listened, and heard a lot of people give some good analogies about teamwork and and what it takes. And I thought of it as a sack race where one person couldn't just run. Um, we had to do it as a team. Mm. And. Uh, so we did that, and the, the last 17 months, though, we both just ran as fast as... Just wide open. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mary, where, where's that emotion coming from from him? You, you've been in this journey with him. He's just worked really, really hard and sacrificed a lot for our family during this time. Yeah, mm -hmm. so a lot, a lot of time away from you and the yep. kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's worth it now. Yeah. And that's the emotion. Definitely. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that makes you never go back. Never. <laughs> never, 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 never. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. So when somebody asks how you not pay off 45000 in 17 months, what do you tell them the secret is? Well, working together. I think you got to have the same goals, and you got to be um, on pace with each other. We have to, you had to coordinate um, a lot with work schedules and with the kids, and I don't think we could have done that if we didn't have the same goals. Yeah, I think you got to be humble um, and just tell friends I can't afford that. And yes, to work, mm -hmm. yes to work, yes to work, yes to work. I heard you say one time, Dave, just draw a line in the sand, and if I never borrow money again, we'll get there. And that mm -hmm. was oh, back as a as a fail safe, and we just worked from there. Just kept going from there. We're not borrowing money. We're going forward. Yeah. What's uh, what's the option? What's the option? What's the option? There's got to be another way. Yeah. Got to be another one. Two options yeah. stink. I'm going to find a third option. There you go. There you go. Keep keep looking until one of them doesn't stink. Yep. That's good. Well done, guys. Thank very, you. Very, very, very well done. So if um, some guy's driving home from his extra job and happens to turn on the podcast later, mm -hmm. and it's got you on here talking about the, you driving home from the bartending job and kind of being overwhelmed by that story, mm. uh, what do you tell them that the – what happens – inside of you when you really do reach that point where you really are sick and tired of being sick and tired because dude i watched you physically change right in front of me when you start talking about that i think uh for me i just felt suffocated i just um mm. i felt like i worked more um you know having three different jobs i worked with a lot of different people and i worked a lot more hours than other people and uh didn't we didn't have anything to show for it, and i didn't i didn't even realize how much debt we had until um we did. We looked at the budget and put it down. We had 15 different people that we owed money to. It was amazing. I, I had no idea that we had owed that much money to that many different people. Um, and that is overwhelming. That's not a place that I want to be or I want my kids to ever be. Mm. Amen. Well done. Who are your biggest cheerleaders outside the two of you? Uh, definitely our in-laws over here. They, they helped out a ton with, with child care and were very supportive of me going to work mm -hmm. quite a bit. And then a friend of mine, uh, Corey, uh, Corey Whitaker, he's debt-free as well, um, really helped support me. And then I got a friend, Keegan Hill, who's, a, who's kind of my accountability buddy. I'd tell him every time we ended the debt, and he was a good, good guy. I love that. So you're a football coach. Yeah. When you were having those tough days beyond just the, the, the vision for the future for you and your family, how did that coaching come into play when you just didn't think you had any more to give? Um, boy, that's, that's hard to say. I, I think I was really focused with, um, with football. There were definitely things.
things that I would say the younger coaches can tend to. Mm -hmm. um, but with the kids um, and my kids, I, you know, I always stress we're going to take care of what we can take care of. We're going to be the toughest guys on the field, and that's the way we're going to handle ourselves. Mm -hmm. Love Amen. that. Well done. Good stuff, guys. Way to go. I'm proud of you. Thank you. How's it feel to be free? Great. Nope. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, we got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story for sure. How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth, How You Can Too, and a copy of the Total Money Makeover for you to give away, and the Financial Peace University membership for a year. And uh, you can give that away to somebody, or you can go through it. It's all the 20, it's all the brand new videos that we just launched the other day. All right, you brought the kiddos. Let's bring them up. What are their names and ages? We have Bria, who's seven, and Nolan, who's five. All right. Have they been practicing Ready. their debt-free scream? Yeah. All right. Good stuff. I love it. Well done, you guys. All right. It's Bria, Nolan, Mary, and Phil from Rockford, Illinois. $45,000 paid off in 17 months, making 90 to 100. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're debt-free! Yeah! <laughs> I love it. That is absolutely wonderful. Man, what a what an incredible story. Very well done. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's really awesome, Dave, to look over there and see a man's man, a football coach, just totally brought to his knees in gratitude. Those those te those were tears of gratitude and appreciation uh, to make it through this journey and be on the other side of that and just uh that's pretty cool. That's about as that's about as manly of a man you'll ever meet right there and, and we need more of that. You know, that's that's incredible stuff. The stuff it takes to serve his family and, to yeah. serve, you know, make, make sure stuff gets done. Yeah. Very, very well done. Good stuff, guys. Very, very well done. You only change your life when you finally say, I've had it. Mm. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. There's no amount of intellectual gymnastics are going to make you get out of debt. You got to get pissed off. I'm done. I'm not living like this. That's when you change, not until. This is The Ramsey Show. Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Ram, Ramsey Personality, number one best-selling author. Well, inflation is affecting all of you right now, from the gas pump to the grocery store. And while you can't control what happens with the economy, you can control what happens with your money. The only way to control your money in uncertain times is to get on a budget. And the best way to budget is with every dollar. You'll plan out your monthly budget. You track all your expenses throughout the month. And every dollar mobile app lets you check in and check your budget from anywhere so you can always make the right money decisions. When you get on a budget, you will be in total control of your money and really not until. Start budgeting for free by going to RamseySolutions.com slash every dollar. This is the Ramsey Show. We're glad you're with us, America. Patty is with us in Boise, Idaho. Hi, Patty. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, I have a dear friend who is recently divorced, and I'm trying to help her go through your baby steps. I've walked her through them. Um, I've tried to explain everything to her, but I'm really stumped on advising her in one area, and I was hoping you could help me advise her correctly. <laughs> um she, because of the divorce, she has to refinance her house. She has to put it in her name. And she has a car that she's upside down on. And by your plan, it tells me sell the car, right? <laughs> but she's um, $5,000 underwater on the car, even if she does private sell. And 
she doesn't have any money at all to buy a car. So she would have to borrow even a couple thousand to buy another car. So I don't know if I should have her roll this into her baby steps, like just put it on the list of her debt. She has $8,000 of additional debt besides this car and her house. Or if I should have her roll it into her house, which you know you always say don't do. So I feel really uncomfortable telling her that. But I'm just not sure how to advise her the best way to go about this. Mm. Well, I'm glad she's got you in her corner. Obviously, it's I'm a hard, hard time for her. She got little kids? She does. She has an 11-year-old and a 13-year-old. And her house is worth 390000 but to refinance it, she has to um, refinance for 165000 The requirement was she had to get her ex-husband's name off the loan. Mm-hmm. What does she make? So <laughs> working two jobs with child support and renting a room out of her house, she's bringing in 43000 a year. She's stretched really thin time wide. Like she's just really, she was really taken by surprise and had she's, no idea about um, finances. She's not going to like my answer, but okay. it is the right answer for her. Okay. She cannot afford this house. Well, so I thought about that, and my the problem I have with that is I. Know I didn't ask know about your problem. Like, I said she can't afford the house. No, I know the the market though in. For her to even rent, like her Honey, house payment, she can't afford. She makes forty five thousand dollars a year, and the only way it works is if the roommate pays their rent, and okay. her ex, who surprised her before, pays child support. There's a lot right. of variables here that are going to cause her to get in trouble. So, do I advise her to sell the house? Sell. Pay all the debt off. Pay all the debt off. Buy a car for cash and go rent the cheapest thing possible and heal. From this process, rebuild or build a career where she makes more money. Obviously, she's going to do that long term. Right. Um, But this house, here's what happens, and I've seen this for 30 years, and it just breaks my heart. But, and let me tell you what's going through her mind, maybe even yours, is these poor children have been through so much already, Mm -hmm. and they're hurting And in order to protect them from even more upheaval and more change, dad's no longer there. There's all this weirdness in their lives. For God's sakes, we don't want to change school districts, and we don't want to make you move out of your bedroom. And in the name of that, she's trying to hang on to the last vestige of normalcy that she can in a way that is completely unrealistic. Were she not in this house and was sitting with this pile of money from the equity in the house in the middle of a kitchen table, there's no she would no more go buy this house than fly to the moon. True. This is trying to maintain the story that was and the story that's gone. Okay. And it's up. I appreciate her mama bear instincts to do that for her baby, but it's a it's a short term fix because what. What she's trading for is tremendous financial stress in these kids' lives in the coming five years. Mm -hmm. And everything's in order for it to be normal, she's going to be so spun up trying to keep everything, trying to run around keeping different fingers stuck in the dike as the dam continues to leak. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And I'm sorry, I've just seen it hundreds and hundreds of times. And um, it took me a little while to realize why people were doing this illogical act, but it was in the name of protecting some stream of continuity in the middle of a, 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 a complete upheaval where their, their, their story that was going to be their life is completely changed, and it's been a nightmare for her and for the kids. Mm-hmm. And the last thing I want to do is make a move. I'm sorry. I, I wouldn't do that. Does she then take some of that equity and get herself some sort of – like I had her do uh, Ken Coleman's career. Yes, yes. Does so, like get yes. some sort of whatever certification or whatever yes. she do increase yes. her income? Okay, and that's, go, right. go, that's go, an and go, and go double her income. Yes. Okay. There's yeah. listen. A house is not a home. A home is where you make it. Right. And when home is full of financial stress following a divorce, it is very difficult to stay on an even keel. And even be somewhat classy about the X because you, every time you're in a pinch, you're just pissed again. Right. It's okay. just very hard to go through the healing process when you pile financial stress on top of the mess. That's right. 
you're surviving instead of healing. Yeah. You have one track mind, survive, survive, survive. Exactly it's all right. adrenaline. You yeah. can't heal. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I've talked you into it or her into it because she's going to go look out there and go, well, what about this? And what about that? I think you rent the cheapest thing possible, buy you a cash car, spend some money on some certifications on a career track. And five years from today, you're going to be in a much better place than you are trying to hang on by your last fingernail on this one old house. And it's just a stupid house. It was the home but now it represents the dream that was, the broken heart. Yeah, Patty, hang on the line. We're going to give you a copy of my best-selling book, From Paycheck to Purpose. She's not ready to read this now. Uh, but when she gets everything settled financially and they get out of there, give her this book. It's kind of the companion to the Get Clear Assessment. It'll help her uh, begin to take steps forward to a much better financial life because of her income and yeah. independence. So hang on the line. We'll give that to you as well. And I'll take one more stab at, stab at the persuasion, Patty, because here's what's running through my mind. She's got seven years with this 11-year-old. Mm -hmm. Where are they going to be in seven years? If they do what I'm talking about and what is the next seven years feel like inside the home? Is it peaceful, joyful, hope filled for the future, or is it stressed and freaked out and barely making it all in the name of trying to hold something together that was the past? And, um, I think that 11 year old is going to have a much better teenage set of teenage years with a mom who's peaceful, stable, building her whole new life, building a whole new dream getting her certifications, moving towards home ownership again in the future, doesn't have a debt in the world, and is dealing from strength and courage rather than a mom that's hanging on by a thread, barely making it, hoping the child support comes in, and hoping the roommate pays. Man, that just doesn't sound like fun to me. Mm -mm. And uh, that's, that, that's this 11-year-old's next seven years. Where does he need to live? What's best for him? And what's best for the other one the next eight years, nine years, whatever? Ten years from today, this lady's going to be in a great life, but she's either going to have walked through more hell to get there, or she's going to have started from taking a t two or three steps back to solid ground to start fresh again. And that's what I, my hope for her is. And I'm sorry she's going through this. It's just, it's just not, it's, it's not good. Divorce just, it's bad. It just messes up everything, man. It's horrible. So sorry. So sorry. Hey, thanks for the call. That puts us out of the Ramsey Show in the books. Austin Shelby, Ben Hill, Zach Hendren, Andrew Holmes, James, and Kelly in the booth. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. intentional about your character you can have money and a career you are the hero in your story live from the headquarters of ramsey solutions it's the ramsey show where debt is dumb cash is king and the paid off home mortgage has taken the place of the bmw as the status symbol of choice we help people build wealth do work that they love and build and create actual, real, amazing relationships. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. It's a free call at 888-825-5225, 888 825 Renee starts off this hour from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Hi, Renee. How are you? I'm good, Dave. It's nice to talk to you and Ken. You too. What's up? 
Well, I'm calling because we're baby steppers. And uh, so my husband and I are on baby step seven. Um, and we were <laughs> we were planning to uh, get land from my relative. He was going to gift us a piece of land next to our current property. And he's since changed his mind. He's not not going to gift us the land any longer. He wants to charge us 60000 for the lot. Now, our only problem is, is he's only told us that in 30, 30 days ago, and we are now, we are not prepared for that. We don't have the money. We don't have the cash. And so we're looking because it's family land that's been in the family since the 60s, and it's currently next to our current property. Um, and we're concerned that we don't, we don't like, we would like to build maybe next to us at some point, or we're not, at least not keep a home from another home from being built. And so we wanted to know, like, should we take out a loan? And if so, like, <laughs> I don't really want to take out a loan, but I'm, I don't want to also lose this, this family land. Um, and it's now or never, he's listing it tomorrow. And so we're looking at taking out a HELOC on our current home and we, we do own our current home. You don't have any money? No, no savings. We just completed your plan here in January. Oh, so you just paid off the house in January? Yes. And you don't have any money in retirement investing at all? We do. We have, we have, uh, we uh, are doing our 15%, um, and it's more because um, we obviously reached baby step seven. So mm -hmm. we're doing, I, I, how much is in your emergency? 30%. Fund? Um, 12,000. Okay. What's your household income? About 70,000. Mm. Okay. Um, wow. Well, that's inconsiderate on his part. <laughs> you are kidding. <laughs> Must be your husband's side of the family. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's mine. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Have you tried knocking a noggin on him? <laughs> knocking a knot on his noggin. We've tried. We've tried offering better deals. We've tried offering 50 instead of 60. We, we've tried um, everything we could think of. Would you make us let what us make What you in know, the world happened? You he went from year. giving it to you to selling it out from under you. Cancer. So he's had cancer for at least the last 10 years. Uh, he has lung and leukemia. And, um, he's trying to get it cleaned up for his he estate. He says the medical, the medical bills are expensive. Oh, he's trying to pay medical bills. Yes, and he, his financial advisor has advised him not to pull from his investments, obviously because the market's down, to pay those medical bills. And he's well off because my my own father um, passed, and so he received the rest of the inheritance from my grandparents. <laughs> oh, the, your dad's portion didn't pass through to you? No. That's weird. Okay. Huh. Well, I've asked every question I can think of. I don't borrow money, and I don't like being jerked around into deals that are, uh, aren't on my timing. So I have a tendency to walk away from this kind of thing, but mainly because I'm just so rebellious. And sometimes I do it to my own detriment. Um, I have regretted it before. And um, so I'm trying to be a little bit even keel because I'm pretty ticked at your little uncle right now. Um, he's got the money to pay his medical. <laughs> so he does not need money to pay his medical bills. Okay, he's got the money to pay his medical bills, and his medical bills aren't that much. He's got insurance. It's not even 60000 Right. and he's got plenty of money. And if he pulled $10,000 out of his stupid investments, it wouldn't kill him. In spite of the fact the market's down, I wouldn't pull it out because the market's down, but I would pull it out before I broke my word to my niece. So, well, the other, the other benefit for him is that there's another lot next to it. And he's going to be selling it. So it will go on the market tomorrow, and he will be able to sell that. And he can get whatever, you know, whatever. How big my, is the lot? From the, from the realist. Uh, it's about three quarters of an acre. Okay. 
So it's not huge, but there's sewer connection right. available. So let's let's talk about it from two different perspectives then. All right. Number one, Dave and Sharon Ramsey don't borrow money. And so we would have to just pass. Hard pass. We don't okay. have the money. We don't have a place to get the money. Without borrowing it, we'd have to hard pass because I just don't borrow money. And once I've gotten my home paid off and I'm baby step seven, the chances of me going back in debt, I just that would be like throwing up a little bit in my mouth. I couldn't do it. But that's how we feel. You know, <laughs> and so I would just say, uh, you should have kept your word to me, in, and I'm sorry you've got cancer, but I'm also sorry you don't have integrity. And I'd be check, uh, checking that box and moving on. Uh, now, having said that, if you go get a home equity loan for $60,000 and you pay it off over the next two years and you're 100% debt free and you've got this lot and you've got a buffer, the story still ends excellently. Um, and, uh, you know, you're going to be just fine. You're not going to keep that debt forever. You're not, it's not going to break you. You could pay it off in what? You could pay it off in two years, really, couldn't you? Well, we when we did the math, we were it was more like four. Yeah, that's not good enough. You need to do it in three, max. Yeah, maximum of three. But I'd three rather, do, I'd, rather okay. do, I'd rather you do I'd rather you do it in two. Um, because this okay. is almost like you know, I don't like home equity loans. I don't like any of this. But it is a singular piece of property. It's not a nice lot that you found across town. It's a singular piece of property that's family dirt. It's next door to you. It gives you buffer and so on. Um, but even the other side of that, you're still going to have a house. Right. Yeah. So you're not, you not got 120,000, right? No, <laughs> we tried, we tried offering, uh, less, but he would not take that either. We tried to buy both lots. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting redneck right now. I'm going to tell him to stuff them both, but you do whatever you want to do. Uh, if you do the home equity loan and take them and um, pay it off real fast, it's not the end of the world financially. It's just I there's when deals like this come at me, I sometimes do the wrong thing out of obstinance, um, admittedly, and so. Um, I, I couldn't do it for multiple reasons, just because I don't like being lied to, and I don't like being jerked around, and I really don't like it when it's freaking relatives. So, yeah, that'd be the end of that. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Is there an area of your life that feels off balance and you're wondering what the right next step should be? Maybe you have uncertainty about your money or starting or just want to start prioritizing your mental health. Maybe you want to find purpose in your career or improve the health of your marriage. Whatever you're facing, it's important to do it with a community of people by your side, encouraging you along the way. And what better way to grow than with a few folks you love doing life with. You can level up and experience all of this at Smart Conference with your friends Saturday, October 22nd in Dallas. Smart Conference is a one-day event designed for you. You'll hear from world-class speakers all day long. Your favorite Ramsey personalities will be there. Plus, our good friends Craig and Amy Groeschel from Life Church are coming. And the best life changes happen when you have support, accountability, and you're around a bunch of people excited about being smart. Check it out. Start today. You can get a four-pack of event passes for only $120. That's $30 a person for a whole day of all of some all of America's best speakers. I mean, teachers, this is an incredible incredible event thanks for joining us victoria is with us in pennsylvania hi victoria welcome to the ramsey show hi thank you dave how are you better than i deserve what's up in your world well you see so we just uh discovered you me and my boyfriend probably this week and we're looking to make my emergency fund and i have a trust fund that probably has i'm gonna say probably about thirty thousand dollars in it uh but the only issue is my mom is the 
I'm going to say like the holder of the account right now. She's not really given me access to it since I became over the age of 21. Now I'm 22. Um, she's making it pretty difficult to access that money. So we were looking just to get it out so we can start the emergency fund. What, so are, the ter- what are the terms of the trust? So it was originally made for schooling, but I've already had my degree, and they made me uh, – she actually had me pay out of pocket for that whole degree because she didn't want to touch the money. So I was probably about $5,000 that I spent on schooling, um, but she won't let me touch any of it. Do you have a copy of the trust? um, I have the information. I've actually been in contact with the trust. And they were just like, hey, she just has to sign this paper, and then it goes into your name. And she will not do it because she thinks I'm going to be a, quote, unquote, stupid kid and blow all the money. Okay. The But the terms of the trust say that it's to revert to you, controls to revert to you at 21? Uh, yeah, but because I was underage when it was made, she just won't sign it over. No, 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 no. Stop. You're not underage now. Right. The terms of the trust say that the money is to be turned over to you after age 21, correct? Yep, and she just has to sign uh, She doesn't have to sign anything. She doesn't it. have to sign anything. Okay. Get back in touch with That's... the trust company and tell them you're going to contact a lawyer and sue their butts if they don't turn your money over to you. Okay. She's no longer yeah. a trustee of a trust that is now defunct because you turned 21. Okay. I'm not a lawyer, yeah. but that's if you if you have a lawyer look at this situation, that's what they're going to tell you. Yeah, that's going to be the next step. We were just trying to figure out if that was the right step or just trying to get her to sign it over would be the best step. Well, I mean, first, best step would be that she doesn't need to sign it because of the terms of the trust. And if you've actually reviewed them, uh, I would get in touch with the trust company and go, uh, the terms of the trust are that it's 21 is turned over to me. There's no signature required on her part. If you don't turn it over to me, I'm contacting legal counsel. So you need to do this right now. Yeah. Just you know, threaten them agree. and just have them send you the money. And that solves the whole thing. You call your mom up and tell her what you did. Huh? Yeah. She's trying the to exercise control yeah. over something she no longer has control over is what I'm saying. Yep. Especially since I moved out, she does not. It has like nothing to do with moving out. Over me. Has nothing to do with moving out. The terms of trust don't state you have to live with her. They don't state you whether you live. They don't state where you live. They state where you're tw- that you're 21. Period. Yeah. Okay. Well, now, if you go do something stupid with this money, you ought to have your butt kicked. Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. Got if you go screw there. this up, if you go screw this up, you ought to have your butt kicked. But that doesn't change the fact that legally you have right to this money. Yeah. Based on what no, you right. are telling me, if you have correct information. Yeah, I should probably just uh, go over the trust and specifically what it says. And if it just says 21, then they should either write me a check or. Or ha- are you, we're going to have an attorney contact them and tell them to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then you can Thank call you. mom and say, mom, I've, I've retained legal counsel because you're illegally holding this. And yeah. you, need, you need to sign the paper and turn it over to me now. Well, there you go. That's an easier answer said than done. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is. And thus is the problem. But, yeah, that's the deal. Hey, thanks for the call. I hope that's all that information's right because I don't know your situation. But it does sound like you need to, you need legal advice uh, once you've gone through the details of the trust, if you can't get mom to release it to you and you think the trust says it's to be released to you. And based on what you're telling me, that's my advice to you. So good question. Thanks for the call. Okay. So here's the rule, Ken. Um, nothing wrong with doing a trust Mm -hmm. and uh, it's not unusual to do a trust for a minor until they turn 21. Uh, and at 21 it's turned over to them. And sometimes it's later it's turned over to them. Uh, the mistake that was made in this situation was, um, they appointed someone to be the trustee who did not have the, the intellectual power to do it because mom is trying to function like mother and not trustee and it's going to get mom sued. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you can't, you, you can be a mother and you can have motherly opinions and I might even agree with her mother. Maybe. Victoria doesn't need this money. Maybe she's acting out. Maybe she's immature. Maybe she's going to blow it. 
I already told her not to blow it, right? Mm -hmm. Just like her mom would have told her, right? But but those instincts are different than the actual legality of a trust. A trustee is only allowed to do what the trust states. Correct. They're not allowed to insert their own opinion Mm -hmm. or advice into the situation unless the trust states that. Yeah. In which case, you have really opened up a Pandora's box of a mess. I was curious what you thought about what we heard here. Now, I think it's fair that Victoria, I don't know that she's read the fine print, and I don't think she's going to, which is great. But does it strike you as odd that the trust would say to her, well, we need a signature from mom? You would think, or is this a bad assumption on my part, that they know what it actually says, and they were, in fact, telling her what what is, in fact, true? I truthfully have no idea why right. a trust company would be, unless they're just out of an abundance of caution trying to keep mama happy. Right. They don't want mama coming back after them, too. Right. She's going to be pissed when this yeah. goes down. Yeah. So that's my guess, is they're just yeah. trying to play politics here rather uh-huh. than legalities, which they're going to get their tail on the crack, too. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a problem. So wow. the problem is when you assign a trustee, then the trustee... Uh, you know what? There's no tru- there is no trust company. She's the trustee. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. She's con- she she must have gone to a bank account, and a banker told her that. That's what I'm wondering. Like, because that struck me as odd. Yeah. That if, I went- so what you have to do then, Victoria, is take a copy of the trust into the bank. Right. And show the branch manager. Look, this is what it says, and that every minute that you hold this, pass this, you're going to be liable. Yeah. And just take that's them what up. I was wondering, because yeah. the trust is just the document that says, here's the deal that manages well, but the there, money. There sometimes is a trust company, but the trust company, I mean, a trust department in a bank can act as a trustee. Exactly. But the, mama's the trustee on this. No question. And she's so, mad that Victoria left the house. Yeah. According to Victoria. So. Yeah. Didn't like the boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shame. But, and all of that may be accurate. Doesn't matter, though, in this case. Well, all that matters is. So point being, the, the takeaway for all of you in America is, if you're going to form a trust, be careful who you appoint as the trustee. It is a tremendous responsibility. And they can get themselves into a problem if they start inserting their own opinions into the application of the legality of the trust. This is The Ramsey Show. personality number one best-selling author is my co-host today in the lobby of ramsey solutions on the debt free stage jake and kelsey are with us hey guys how are you doing well doing well good to have you guys where do you live irvine california all the way to nashville all the way across the whole stinking united states way to go guys come in thank you for coming and how much debt did you pay off we paid off four hundred and fifty six thousand dollars in six years and 300000 of that was in the last three years. Wow. Good for you. And your range of income during that six years? We started at 175000 and we ended at 285000 Cool. What do you all do for a living? I'm a teacher, and he's a physical therapist. Okay. And so, wow, great incomes. So, uh, what, what in the world? What kind of debt was this? Student loans. Yeah, (laughs) primarily student loans. We had one car built in there, but it was all pretty much made up of student loans. $456,000 in student loan Mm -hmm. debt for a teacher and a PT. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. It was foolish in the beginning, but when we were signing up for things, it was just, it'll be our problem in the future. We'll worry about it later. And then, obviously, it became our problem. (laughs) Yeah. How long have you guys been married? 12 years. We actually had our anniversary on... um, Saturday. Saturday. Oh, happy anniversary. Yes. Very Thank good. You. Okay, so uh, halfway through your marriage, six years ago, 
that student loan's just still sitting there, almost a half a million dollars staring at you. And you, you, you what, wake up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat? I mean, what happened? What, what in the world? What changed, what changed the direction on this? So we grew up in Minnesota, and then we moved to California for Jake's physical therapy school. And when he was in school, we knew that we wanted to get rid of the debt somehow. We just didn't know what the plan was. Um, and so while he was in school, we were living on the teacher's salary. And I had a long commute, and I listened to the Dave Ramsey show on my commute. And so I asked Jake if he was interested in trying the program. And basically, the minute he got out of school, we started running. And um, I would say at the beginning, we were a little bit Dave-ish. And then that's when uh, the last three years you saw how we picked up and really worked to pay it off. Yeah, hundred grand a year for three years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were after it. I mean, you're on beans and rice. Absolutely. Jake at one time was working four jobs. Wow. So he's an inpatient physical therapist. So he was working at four different hospitals. Um, that became a little too much. So he scaled it back. But um, we sacrificed a lot of time. I didn't see him a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I did summer school. Um, he worked really hard. You know, ten hour days every weekend. I would tell people, Jake works every day. And I think they heard, Jake works a lot. And it was, Jake works every day. <laughs> All day. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For a lot of days in a row for three years there. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Wow. Powerful. Uh, guys, there's so many times that I have sat with people or talked to people here on the air, either one, and they have a mountain of student loan debt like this. And you guys are incredible. Because uh, that was uh, a wee bit daunting. Mm -hmm. Yes to look up and go, I got 450000 on a teacher and a PT's income. Mm -hmm. uh, because neither one of these are six-figure incomes usually. Uh, but the way you worked them, you turned them into that. Correct. Oh, my gosh. Amazing. Yeah, I, I got to ask, because just the strain on your relationship, just not seeing each other, then you're exhausted, you're working uh, every day, as your wife said to me. What kept you going in some of those dark days? It was um, – Definitely knowing what the future held and kind of uh, as the one question we figured you'd maybe ask about is um, one of the keys is sacrifice. And sure. um, we definitely made the most out of our time. Um, on the weekends, a lot of times when I'd come home, we knew we knew we'd maybe go to church, we'd prepare a meal, we'd eat, we'd visit with friends for a tiny bit and we'd have maybe one to two hours together mm -hmm. so we really learned to cherish those one to two hours mm -hmm. and we knew that once we got over with this life was going to be so much better on the other side yeah. and a few months out it certainly is yeah have you had a moment to kind of emotionally and financially and relationally exhale a little bit a little bit um have you, has it hit you <laughs> you know what in a sense it hasn't because i'm still working some um working our way through the steps and i actually jokingly have told kels a couple of times when i go to work on the weekends it almost feels natural like when i'm going to work extra jobs and extra shifts mm. when i stay home it actually it actually feels yeah. more abnormal kind of like what are you doing <laughs> we have here time on together. the weekend <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um but it's it's starting to sink in it's starting mm -hmm. to feel real that um all the hard work that we did for these years is paying off in our future. Did future's you have a sense of better. release when it was gone? Definitely. We knew the day that it was going to be gone, and we had the loan company that we were going to call and do it, and we had cookies made <laughs> with uh, yeah. with uh, getting out of debt and stuff. And um, and so once we made that call and once it was processed, um, we definitely felt the relief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm going to go back to what I said a minute ago. The the Four hundred and fifty, almost five hundred thousand dollars is daunting because most a lot of people give up right there. It's too overwhelming. I can't get there. It's hard to it's hard for people to internalize the belief, the hope that they can ever get there. And you guys did it in six years, most of it in three years. What do you tell that person who says, oh, man, there's just no way I can't I can't I, I kind of see how you guys did it, but I can't believe it for myself. You know what I'm saying? All right. They need to definitely believe in themselves. And then like we, we're living walking examples, a teacher and a physical therapist. And we made it work. As we said, it, talk, it really comes down to dedication um, and hard work and um, definitely sacrificing and planning yourself. I think that you have to have a goal. I don't think there was a day that we didn't talk about the debt. Every single day we talked about it. And I think that's sort of been the release now too is 
you don't have to talk about that, but you have to have that goal that you have to find going. something else to talk yeah. about. Right? <laughs> exactly. yeah. What are you doing home and what am I supposed to say to you? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but um, I think that people just have to figure out, you know, what you can do, that you can work those extra jobs, that you can be willing to sacrifice. Um, ours was a longer journey, and I think a lot of people sometimes um, are shorter. And uh-huh. so it's just what are you willing to give up? You know, I mean, we drive a... 1998 Camry. So, I mean, there's things sometimes you have to give up to um, yeah. get to the goal that you want at the end. Well, it's time for you to buy a car now. <laughs> I mean, you, yes. you really do need to get a better car. Yeah. That one sucks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It still works. Yeah, I know. But uh, yeah, you got you got to break loose, man. You got to be done. I don't, I don't want you to go crazy here, but go pay cash for it for sure. But, oh, my gosh. I mean, you have worked so, so hard. I'm so proud of y'all. Y'all are an amazing couple. Oh, thank and, you. And uh, you kind of look like you got a little PTSD a little bit, like you're still trying to – yeah. a little shell shock still from yeah. – you gutted it out so dramatically. I mean, there was so many years of saying no, and we can't do this, we can't do that. And, um, now, like we – you said the release is yeah coming taking a trip to Nashville uh, going to visit family doing things like that that we said no to a lot over the last several years yeah. so um, now we get to enjoy these things on a much grander scale. Do you feel um, when you do when you do take on something this size do you feel accomplished? Quite yeah. Um, like, well, I, if we did this we could do anything. Exactly yeah exactly all along the way um, Kelsey and I always tell people that once we even got towards the end we could already feel the freedom. Mm-hmm. You talk about the peace, and it's indescribable. Even when we knew we weren't fully done, we still felt, as you mentioned, the release already. You've mentioned before, it always feels like you're giving yourself raises all along the way. And we, for the longest time, never even had to think much about money because we knew where it was always going to be going. Mm. And now we just kind of transitioned that into better ways to, yeah. to save it and invest it. I think we felt the peace along the way mm-hmm. too. It was, um, at first it was so daunting to put all those student loans and see them, but once they started going, it's like we felt like we had more money even though every month our money went out the door, but you just felt that you had that. Um, I think because you're giving every dollar a name and knowing where it's going. Mm-hmm. That's good. They, you, you felt a sense of control before yes. you were even debt free because you actually exactly. were in control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Good for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Hey, we got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's going to be a cakewalk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. Yeah, yeah I hope really. So. <laughs> and uh, we got a uh, copy of the uh, Total Money Makeover book and a Financial Peace membership as well. You guys are incredible. You're heroes. I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank, thank you, so, you much. so much. Jake and Kelsey, Irvine, California, 456000 paid off in six years, 300 in the last three years, making 175 the 285. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, Three, two, two, one. one. We're We're debt free. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty fun, boys and girls. This is The Ramsey Show. of the day, Colossians 4.2, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. President John F. Kennedy said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Amen. Well done. Good stuff. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, best-selling author, is my co-host today. Uh, Marsha's with us in Evansville, Indiana. Hi, Marsha. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello, thank you for taking my call. Sure. I have been listening to you since April 5th of 1995, and I finally have got a question I just need your opinion on. Okay. Uh, should I buy a piece of farm equipment so I can section 179 expense it for next April's income tax? No. Oh. Now, let's talk about why. Uh, The way you stated all of that, the only reason you're doing this is for income tax. Yes. Okay. No. 
And uh, 179, it means you just get, the only thing about 179 is you get to write the whole thing off in one year. You don't have to put it on a depreciation schedule. Correct. Okay. So how expensive a piece of farm equipment? Between 80 and 120. Okay. Let's, let's call used. it 100 for round numbers. Okay. Yes, sir. Are you in a, what, a 30% tax bracket, 35% yes. tax yes, bracket? Yes, sir. No, no. Actually, I'm in a 21. Next year, uh, it'd be a 25. But this year, it's a 21. Okay. So you're gonna write a check for a hundred thousand dollars for a piece of equipment you don't need, and the actual um, the actual mathematical I benefit. I didn't need it. I'm sorry. I wouldn't say I didn't need it. Yeah, I but, could do without it, but I would use it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. I mean, if you bought a new airplane, you'd use that too. But, uh, <laughs> but that's not the point. The, um, so that you you can one seventy nine that as well if you're using it for business. But the um, uh, the the point being this, okay, the hundred thousand dollars leaves your checking account, and then yes. you take a one hundred thousand dollar tax deduction as your income in a, in excess of one hundred thousand a year. Uh, Ninety eight is okay. what I expect for this year, okay. depending on the grain market. Okay, so you would pay zero taxes. On the ninety-eight thousand, and it would have been around twenty percent, actually around fifteen percent, probably, because mm -hmm. it's a graduated tax income tax. It's not all the final bracket, but let's, so let, let's say your tax bill on the ninety-eight thousand would be fifteen thousand dollars. Yes, I yes okay. exactly. And then if you didn't pay, if you didn't have this write-off, you pay fifteen thousand dollars. So you're yes. trading one hundred thousand for fifteen. Can I ask you one other thing then? Did, did that make sense well, to we, you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, we did not take any crop last year mm -hmm. until January of this year. So I already I already know from my tax lady I will be spending $15,000 in taxes mm -hmm. for the 2021 crop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so if I were to buy this piece of equipment and it 179 would... it, I'd save $30,000. Okay, but you're spending a hundred to save thirty. True. Yes, I agree. I mean, if you want to trade dollars for quarters, I got a deal for you. Well, it's like, what else do I do with the money? My stock. Well, I'll, I'll do that deal with you. How much do you want to do? I'll do five hundred thousand with you if you want to do dollars for quarters. Walk away slowly, Marsha. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing what's the piece of equipment uh it would be a used backhoe or a dirt mover okay all right so here here's the only reason you buy equipment in business the only reason it makes you more than it costs you yes i when, agree when i buy computers for this place i can 179 them when I buy cameras for this place, I can 179 them. And I spend a lot of money on that kind of thing every year around here. Um, so I, when I furnish offices, I can 179 it up to a certain limit. Okay. But I don't buy any of those things for the 179 tax write off benefit. I take the 179 tax write off, but I only buy them if I can make more money because of them than they cost. And you're not going to increase the quality or the your income on this farm by as much as this equipment costs. I agree. So you're not ROIing. You're not getting a return on investment on the equipment. And you're only buying this for a tax write-off, which is trading dollars for quarters. And you don't do that. And I question whether you ever take a piece of financial advice from your idiot tax person again. This is horrible advice. Well, it was my idea, and they they agreed with me. Okay. Well, I, I, then I I won't be quite so harsh since I have you on the phone. But oh my goodness, <laughs> oh my goodness, darling. No, we don't want to trade dollars for quarters. People do this all the time in business and call it smart, and it's and it's because they're usually because their tax accountant is only looking at the tax benefit of it, not at the actual economic trans transaction. And the economic transaction is you're handing somebody a hundred thousand bucks, and all you're getting for it is thirty. That's not a good trade. It's not a good trade. I hate taxes more than you do, but I ain't trading a dollar for a quarter. 
just for that. Now, I'm going to take the 179 write-off every single time on items I purchased because they were going to make me more than they cost me yeah. anyway. That's correct. And that, uh, and I believe me, I max my 179 out every year, and Trump's tax law really helped those of us in small business. It's one of the few things that small business come along in a long time, that 179 being maxed out, like like entire floors of stuff we could write off around here. Instead of writing it off over three years or five years, we wrote it all off in one year. So the small business person, is the fear, is the answer to that fear, oh, I'm going to get a tax bill, is it retained earnings, just juice that a little bit? Yeah, you got to set your money aside for taxes. Right, and so then your, you don't need to be income. so worried about it. Yeah, so it doesn't bite you. But but you just you just get sick of giving the government money because they're well, stupid. Trust me. I, I don't, get I don't that. like giving stupid people money. I get that. And I look and see the size of the money they take from me so that I am a law-abiding citizen. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, I'm not a law-abiding citizen. Oh, my gosh. You know, and, and but it's just thievery in the name of government. Yeah. And so I don't I don't disagree with her in that sense. I God man, it pisses me. I don't want to do it. It just makes me I stay mad around tax time. But I'm also not gonna trade dollars for quarters in the name of keeping money out of their hand. That that's just cutting off your nose to spite your face. Kathy's with us in Canada. Hi Kathy, how are you? Hi, gentlemen. Thanks for talking to me today. Sure. Right quick before we run out of time. What's your question? Yes. Um, okay, I'll make it quick. I'm newly single. I have three children, 43 years old, starting from scratch. I'm getting $150,000 settlement from my ex any day, and I'm wondering, just pay off debt and, and start from scratch or or invest it and, and try and build it. I'm just scared I'm starting over. How much debt do you have? So I have a $28,000 car and $40,000 line of credit, plus my house. 68 plus your house. What do you owe on the house? Yes. I owe 180. It's worth 240. What are you going to be doing for a living? I'm a correctional officer for the federal government and up you here. you pay your bills on that? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. I gross um, about 130 and I net about 80. So okay. I'm, okay. I'm okay. I just wanted child to make support sure as well or that. just this one cash in your No, debt? no. Yeah, we're 50-50, so none okay. of that. I'm really nervous. I'm sorry. That's okay. You're fine. You're doing good. You're doing good. And you're, and you're, helping, me, you're helping me meet the clock before I run out of That's time right. here. So There we go. There yeah. we go. I, I appreciate I, I would it. pay off the debts and start fresh and make sure you're living on a tight budget so you don't get yourself uh, messed up on your new income being less than it was when it was combined. Okay. Okay. Be very careful to I'll live on the 130. Off. Yeah, I've been binging your books. I've been I've been budgeting like crazy. So I feel like I just want to start this off on a, a fresh foot and not make big mistakes. So, yeah. so, so the whatever, remaining, I might have one of the things I did when I started fresh after going broke. In my case, in your case, it's a, it's a divorce. But the um, mm-hmm. one of the things I did is I went back to the old debts and I said, okay, what was going on inside of my heart that allowed me to do that? I want to make sure that's healed. Uh-huh. So how did those yeah. debt? Where did those yeah. debts come from? And uh, make sure that part's healed so they never grow back after you get rid of them. That's a good thing to look into. You go, well, it was all him. He was stupid. Okay, then that's fine. And we, we got rid of him, so we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's one way of healing from it. Yep. <laughs> Ken, good show today. Thank you, sir. Austin, Ben, Zach, Andrew, James, and Kelly in the booth. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? It's your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts.